Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build model kits and hang out and, you know, Lego sets. We're going to do Lego tonight. Um, it's going to be pretty chill. I'm going to throw the Bear Cave mo moat in the chat and the Lego moat. Uh, thank you, Harold, for hosting the stream. Buddy, thank you as always for your support. Thanks for being here. Um, if you're a subscriber, you can throw the emote in the chat. And let me know you're here. Uh, we are going to do the usual where I just kind of hang out with y'all for a little bit as we wait to see if more folks want to pop in and join us. Um, uh, I do have a question for y'all. Those of you in chat, let me know what you think about the music that I've been playing. It's probably about a, a couple weeks now of doing this, of having uh, music from uh, Monster Cat, the Twitch channel Monster Cat. Um because this person just streams music that is usable on Twitch, that is uh, is not going to um, uh, be an issue um, on on VODs. Um, uh, Leo is here. Hello, Leo. Um, uh, uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, and yeah, I, I, you know, the not not all streamers do music before. Some do, some don't. Uh, some. Uh, just uh, just have the silence going, or they have one song on repeat, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, Lashbrook's here. Hi, Lashbrook. And I don't know. Um, I know that my pre-show, pre-pre-show, I should say, the stream up, but me not going, is usually only like five, six minutes. Mr. Bob is here. Fuck yeah. Hey, Mr. Bob. Uh, welcome, welcome. But yeah, like, you know, it's only like five minutes, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, and those watching on the archive later on YouTube, this doesn't matter to you. You never catch the music. I stop it before the stream goes. Because while I've been told that the music that Monster Cat plays on their stream uh, will not affect VODs, I have no idea about YouTube. And I want to make sure that things are cool. Uh, Recyclable. Hello, Recyclable. Hi, hi to you. Great crew of folks here in the chat. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh... Reminder, folks, it's September. If you've never uh, subscribed with Cash Money, a regular old Tier 1 subscription, you can do that for half off. I still get the same cut, and uh, uh, Twitch doesn't take their cut. So it's half off. Uh, if you have a gift sub, you can convert that. If you have a Prime sub, you can convert that. If you're gifting someone a sub, it's $5 to gift. But that person could convert it for $250. And it would it would start after the month, uh, and also if you cheer with, um, uh, oh, uh, Telzos, hello, um, welcome. Uh, also, if you cheer uh, with the Subway sub emote, uh, there's bonuses. I get bonuses. So those are things. Those are things. We're gonna wait for a few more minutes to see if anybody else wants to join us. Before we get to building on this lovely Monday, uh, it has been a Monday. Um, we're working on the uh, Ultron's here. Hey, Ultron, happy to have you here. We are working on a Lego set called Batman Brother Eye Takedown. So that that's bro that's Batman, and that's Brother Eye, and that's Batwoman, and that's the Bat Jet. And we're gonna, you know what we're gonna do when we start to stream up building proper because it's a Lego set. I nulled two of the three bags. I'm going to start building Brother Eye. I'm going to talk about who these characters are because maybe you don't know Batwoman. Maybe you don't know Brother Eye. Maybe you don't know Omac, whose name I couldn't remember. Which is funny because I do remember that Omac, O-M-A-C, stands for one man army core. The blue guy in the Lego set is real cool, says Ultron. Yes, Omac. Yes, it's Omac. One man arm army core. Not armored core, army core. It is a dumb idea by Jack Kirby years and years ago. Brother I, also an addition, uh, an idea of Jack Kirby way long time ago. Oh, we got gear uh, is gifting a tier one sub to the community. It's the first, their first, Lord Crashington. Lord Crashington is now uh, a, uh, got a gift sub. That rules. I ain't afraid of the bat. And then Lord Crashington could convert that for 250. Uh, that's a dumb ass 60 comics name. Yes, Ultron. It is. 
Christian's here. Well, hello there. Hello to you. Yeah, let's throw the bear cave. Recyclables got it right. Uh, if you're a supporter, throw them in there uh, and thank uh, uh, Telto Set. Can't stay. Just wanted to throw some support. Well, that's rules. Thank you so much. So, yeah, Jack Kirby. You don't think about Jack Kirby and creating uh, fun characters. So, the idea of OMAC was power suit. We put a satellite in space, Brother I. Brother I can, like, beam down shields and weapons and all kinds of stuff. And OMAC goes on adventures, and it's a whole thing. And it's a whole thing. Uh, and th they do their thing. Now, that, that doesn't matter now. Because that's in the past. And in fact, everything in this kit is, you know, when they relaunched the DC lines, uh, Obak ends up, mother, uh, ends up a motherfucker during the Identity Crisis. Yes. But during the last reboot, Flashpoint, where they changed a bunch of stuff, they not only did they reintroduce Batwoman, uh, and it's no longer Kathy Kane, it's Kate Kane, I don't know why Kate is more modern than Kathy, but it is. Uh, they also make... OMAC is now one of many, not a dude, uh, one of many uh, androids that have... Uh, viruses that have taken over people. And Brother Eye is evil. But the thing about Brother Eye, y'all... And let's get the overhead, because we can start building as we're talking about it. The thing about Brother Eye... Used to be Brother the letter I. Then it became Brother E-Y-E because -E, it got sentient. Um, Batman created Brother I as a satellite to track metahumans because he was kind of scared of the Justice League sometimes, which is a thing that Batman does quite often. Uh, and then that got hacked and turned into this and it became this whole thing. And then Wonder Woman killed the dude because ha she had to. Uh, and then when that dude died, Brother I went into this whole thing and it's this whole thing and then Omac eventually like defeats Brother Eye after other people defeated Brother Eye and like it's pretty great Jack Kirby getting some cinematic love after Thor Rag oh uh, the immortals coming yes indeed uh, Batman is paranoid yes Batman is the thing that I always love is Batman's like hey um so I did a thing in case y'all went um bonkers and evil and now someone who is evil is using the thing I made to do evil sorry that happens like a lot Batman's contingency plans are often exploited which is a bummer Affinity Crisis is the last time I really paid attention with DC I loved it all um so we've got we've got Bruce Wayne here so this is Bruce Wayne we got uh gray Bruce Wayne love love the uh, the gray costume a thing we should note about this before we get to the building with these two minifigs, because we haven't built OMAC yet. That's Batman, indeed. So here's Batman, right? You take the cowl off. Uh, let's see if he... Do, yes. So Batman has eyes, but also has a gray headband. And that gray headband becomes Batman's eyes. And that is a clever, nonsense thing to do. See that? It's a headband. I love that. Now counter that with Batwoman. Uh, Kate Kane. Kate Kane, who, uh, in the spirit of not just being uh, easily identifiable, who wears uh, this is a this is a wig attached to the, the uh, to her mask, and then she does a thing to make her. Sometimes it's powder, sometimes it's a uh, chemical reaction, pales her skin. Uh, so she's got this cool like mask thing. But when you put this on, you can't see it at all. It it do, This does not need to be there at all. Uh, it's just that they wanted to have it so it didn't look like she just had white of her eyes. That she has, you know, she's wearing a mask underneath her mask. But that's like a weird choice that I like. I don't know. Yeah, and her hair is attached. And it's all, this is all one piece. This isn't multiple pieces. It's all one piece, which I like a lot. Uh, impossible. I've never seen them together. Batman and Bruce Wayne. Yeah. So, if you don't know Kate Kane, Kathy Kane, the original Batwoman, Kate Kane, current incarnation of Batwoman, here's the things you need to know about Kate Kane. One, she's not she's not associated with Batman. There's a she's not like part of the greater Bat family. 
She wasn't raised by Batman. She wasn't like the, you know, joined up and goes to the Batcave. She's like that cousin that's not actually a cousin that you call a cousin, but like they're not related because that's not your aunt. That's just your mom's old friend. But in this case, uh, imagine that instead of Bruce Wayne's uh, rich parents being murdered and him going on a quest to become uh, Batman, uh, Kate Kane, uh, when she was a young child, her twin sister and mom were murdered. And her father is alive. Uh, and she goes through a very rebellious phase. Uh, she goes into the military like her dad because her dad's a hot... Their parents are rich, but her dad is like high-ranking military person. You know, they get kidnapped. Her her, uh, her mom and, and the, uh, her and her sister get kidnapped. Uh, and like her dad sends like an elite squad of dudes, military dudes, to like rescue them. Um, so there's that whole thing, right? So she goes into the military to be like her dad. She's got military training. Mo Kate's a lesbian and doesn't want to deny that she is. So she has to leave uh, the uh, military, the army academy that she's in. She dates a cop, uh, Renee. We know Renee from uh, a fantastic uh, police officer in, in Gotham. Uh, she beats up a dude just as Batman arrives to save her. And then she's just like, Batman seems cool. So she basically becomes Batwoman because she's like, Bat Batman's making a difference. And now here's a twist that I love. Instead of Batgirl, where, you know, uh, um, Commissioner Gordon kind of always knew but never wanted to say anything. Um, her dad is just like, wait, you're Batwoman. Fuck yeah. Uh, okay. Well, if you're going to do this, do this. So he sends her all across the globe to train with people that he knows from his military contacts, people that he used to work with, connections, so that she can like basically be a better version of Batwoman. And then she comes back, and then they like make a bunch of cool military shit uh, based on Batman stuff, like her bat jet. Is just like based on the you know like the battle like you know different stuff from from Batman that you, that Batman uses, uh, and it's uh, Batman Bad Blood has some good Batwoman content in it. Agreed, yeah. Um, and I, I I just really like the idea that it is um, so basically a proactive supportive version of Commissioner Gordon. Yeah, I mean like it's instead of Commissioner Gordon being like. I lost her mother. I can't lose her. I can't. I, I have to look the other way. He's like, well, if you're going to fucking do this. Uh, basically, he's like, if you're not going to go back to school and go to a regular college uh, and you're going to fucking fight crime, then I'm going to make sure you, you're you cool and you do it. Uh, also, he's very supportive of the fact that um, so the whole thing is she didn't want to lie in school and and break her honor code by claiming that she wasn't a lesbian. And he really respects that. He might have a little trouble with his daughter being a lesbian. We're not really sure. But he definitely is supportive of her being like, I didn't want to live a lie. So, like, Jack's a good dad. Or Jake, Jake. Jake's a good dad. Uh, uh, I like the idea of Mr. Kane saying, fuck yeah, in Pat's voice. Uh... Shaz, has they ever tried scamming a scammer? Uh, no, I have never. Um, I, uh, odd question, but have you tried ever? Um, no. You know, sometimes people are like, oh, I know that this is a, um, a call to try to get personal information to me. They're like, my computer doesn't have a virus. This is just a thing. And they're like, oh, I'm going to waste their time. Uh, I don't want to waste my time. That's kind of my thing. Like when uh we, you know I, I was I have I've talked about when I went into an interview with a place that turned out to be a pyramid scheme.
for a job and the job was was they were they were lying about what the job was and all this other stuff and when i figured that out i immediately was like oh actually i don't want to work on commission i'm looking for uh, an hourly rate like your ad said and we just ended the conversation and i could have wasted this woman who was interviewing i could have wasted her time but i was like eh. the longer they're on the phone the more they pay yeah i mean like for me, it's one first and foremost. I don't answer the phone, um, but I certainly like. I it's never occurred to me to like waste someone's time as a scammer. I might just be like, "Hey, just so you know, like this is this isn't gonna work. I'm not in. I I don't believe you. Like whatever. I might just tell them that. But yeah, I mostly just hang up, block the call. Um. That's kind of my thought on that. So anyway, so Batwoman rules. Kate Kane rules. Uh, I have not watched her show. I bet it's not good. Just because I don't really like. Uh, I think I think Supergirl is good. I think the beginning of Arrow is pretty good and it lost me. Um, I don't like the flash too much but i also don't really care about the flash and i haven't watched legend of tomorrow but i hear that's fun uh so that's my hot takes on all of those uh some guy had called so i spoke in an accent to piss the guy off it was glorious he couldn't understand uh, i put on a scottish accent yeah i mean like hey what you do in your free time uh is what you do in your free time i'm not here to tell you how you should react to that but yeah that's just not like that just ain't my thing um all right so we're, we're building brother eye and we get one of these cool things which is a little led it comes with the battery because lego is nice and then it lights up and there's a light over there which is fun so we'll put that there no we gotta turn it around because the light is going to reflect off this, which is cool. Turn that around. And then we'll uh, put this stuff in there. I will occasionally answer the phone if I think it's a Democratic fundraising call and argue policy with them. But only because I really tell them I won't donate to a party anymore. Only candidates that share my pretty far left views. I understand, Asma. Instead of party uh, donations, you want to make candidate donations. You know, you know change locally and all that uh, I follow a lot of Arrow Flash Legends and just got tired of the same internal drama every goddamn week uh, I do think the crossover stuff is kind of fun and kind of cool um, like Flash and Supergirl interacting with each other I do think Supergirl's pretty good um, but uh, yeah I got just tired of Arrow and uh, I got uh, just ne flash never really hit me um, but I know people that swear by those shows and they, they love them so I don't know um, I don't know uh, but yeah I think I think that's that and I haven't watched any of like Titans or um, I never watched Gotham uh, I've never watched any of that, any of those shows, any of the Batman stuff, um, any of the DC st uh, uh, app stuff, uh, I've never seen any of it. Uh, I gave up Daredevil pretty quickly. I stuck with Daredevil, and I like Daredevil. Um, uh, I think that, in my opinion, Jessica Jones, while being a fucking trip and sometimes very rough, uh, is probably my favorite of those. And Daredevil, I think, is good. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Like, you know, there's, there's a few here and there, you know. Um, I really enjoyed the first two seasons of Arrow. Unfortunately, I watched four or five. There you go. Do people watch that Krypton show? I'm sure it's recyclable. I'm sure someone does. I'm sure someone watches that. I'm sure there are people that watch Titans. Uh... Um, you know, all those shows must have somebody watching them. I gave it really quickly because it felt really slowly paced like all of Dragon Ball. 
Daredevil, Daredevil season three was so good. I, I, I don't disagree with you. Um, um, Luke Cage season one was really good. I don't necessarily think it continued to be good. And I don't think he was definitely great in Defenders. I think he kind of got... But because it felt uh, like a genre piece, which I love. I love when they do genre in that. Like, to me, that's the fun stuff, is, is playing with that. Which is why, I like, you know, like, I don't love I, Defenders, and I get it, and you want to interconnect them, and that's your, your thing, and you do that, and I think that's cool. But I also would have liked it if they had been different eras and maybe not crossed over so they could really play with the genre. Uh, I don't even know who most of these characters are. Uh, yes, Bushmaster was, was really good. Um, I think season two of Luke Cage got a little bit more into... It, it got... It, it just wasn't, to me, it wasn't as strong as the first season. I think they they were a little lost about what to do. Um, okay, so there's brother's eyes eye. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a lot there's a lot of that stuff going on, and I get why some people like I've never seen any of Doom Patrol. Uh, I don't. I think I know a couple people. Harold says uh, that his dad watches Krypton, and he also likes Legend Tomorrow. I know some people that really love Legend Tomorrow. I would like to see that at some point. But yeah, uh, I've heard good things about Doom Patrol. I don't. I don't know anyone personally that watches it, so I don't know. Luke Cage exists. Me, oh, me being Thanos, I don't even know who you are. Okay, I get that. Took me a second, says. Uh, the thing, uh, I for for seventy style bucks, which isn't as Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Yeah. See, for me, it would be I would like a seventies. Luke Cage in the same universe as a 70s daredevil because um, folks, Hell's Kitchen is very expensive right now and is very nice. It is not the neighborhood that he moved into to protect. It's kind of a bummer that he's spending a lot of time protecting this Hell's Kitchen. So I think a 70s like that's that's the daredevil. Like it's called call. It was called Hell's Kitchen for a reason, folks. All right, so we got the eye. Look at this scary thing. It lights up now. Ooh, Brother Eye is watching. It's gonna have a virus take over metahumans and have them fight other metahumans. Period pieces are fun. I I agree. Uh, the best way to fight this is to upload every virus, a uh, computer virus that has ever been created at it at once to distract it. While a guy punches its power source. There's other things that happen as well. But that's the one that stood out to me. Brother Eye. Yeah. This is Brother Eye. Brother Eye is a satellite. Uh, that was. That, that in current incarnations. Batman built. And then. Uh, somebody took over. And hijacked. And used for evil purposes. Uh, given an email with a Trojan horse, indeed. Now that Disney Marvel gets a second chance to try with the Defenders. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh... So, Saz, metahumans are an attempt to categorize all of the weird and wacky characters in uh, the DC universe. The idea being like, hey, what the fuck is Killer Croc? What what's up with King Shark? Uh what's uh, what's going on? What's happening? Uh and it's so it's basically their it's their version of mutants. Not everyone has it. Like some people like Shazam is powered by magic. So that's different. He's not a metahuman. Uh Catwoman is either a metahuman or isn't a metahuman, depending. Uh Poison Ivy has become a metahuman. Shaz, there's a guy named King Shark. Um, he's a shark. He's a shark man. Uh, 
He he's a uh, he is a, a minor at best character. But like Catman, that's just a dude. Catman is just a dude. Um but King Shark is a metahuman. Scarecrow, just a dude. Poison Ivy was just a lady is now probably a metahuman. All well Definitely the poison ivy that died and came back as, uh, that like was reborn in a new body, like grew a new body for, for themselves. That's definitely a metahuman at that point. First run at character themes, so most basic name possible. Yeah. Catman rules. Catman is, is, is a great look. Not everyone can have a cool name like Dead Shark. Not, oh, sorry, Dead Shot. I messed that up. Dead Shot. Very cool name. Some characters are just like, whoa. Uh, Metahumans are basically mutants, but not all played up to be the minority. Yeah, Recycle, they're, they're, ra they're like in the Flash universe, they go out of their way to, the, the Flash universe, go out of their way to explain, because a lot of it's like, temporal portals happened, or... Ancient magics happened. Uh, that they like a lot of it is accidents. Like Flash get tapping into the to that, and it's like a lot of a lot of that is like accidental stuff, which is why some people become uh, like powered over time from being exposed to different things. They like develop abilities. Uh, Metahumans basically anyone who has powers regardless of origin. Yeah. Look, it's just they didn't want to call them mutants, but they realized they had, like, a bunch of nonsense. I enjoy Static Shock's bang baby term. Oh, yes, the bang babies, the exposure to the gases that mutated a bunch of them, uh, which also had a thing where eventually Richie, because he'd be exposed to a bunch of metahumans, including Static, for so long, d slowly developed abilities. Uh, he got way better at making gadgets and uh and i guess smarter i don't remember but he got better at he got better at using his knowledge yes you have a stand instead yeah yeah iron man iron man would be a meta would not be a metahuman but captain america who was not born as a metahuman becomes one through experimentation and a super serum all right, so we're building three of these, and we can do them all at the same time. We're just working on our brother eye. We got a brother eye to build. We got a bat jet to build uh, for Batwoman to fly at brother eye and take them down. Bunch of stuff. Uh, green arrow, not a, uh, a metahuman, but a pretty strong person. Uh, that, you know, yeah, that's just how they roll over in the DC universe. Just decisions they made. Green Lantern. Yeah, Green Lantern is a, all the Green Lanterns are powered via energy and transformed. Green Arrow is ridiculously strong for a normal human. Yeah. Uh, hey, Pat, says Mr. Bob. I'm building my second Lego Speed Championship kit. There are less stickers, but there are some weird things. Ooh. Uh, I, I should mention for this kit, no stickers with this kit. Three in ones generally don't. This Batman kit, no stickers. Uh, it gave you uh, this weird eye thing, and we've got these kind of like pre done uh, computer control uh, things. Uh, but no stickers, which I'm happy with. I like stickers, but I'm happy not to have them. Uh, but Mr. Bob. I am, uh, I'm glad there are less stickers because that last thing you built had a fuck ton of stickers. There's probably too many stickers, my friend. Uh, let's see. Sorry. That's an email that I don't care about. Don't care about this email. Great. 
Uh, all right. Um, Rey Mysterio versus Gr uh, Grand Metalik right now on Monday night. Hell yeah! Uh, I I heard that that was that was happening because it's the Garden and they're doing some cool stuff in Madison Square Garden. I am not there because I don't have money. I don't have money for wrestling shows. I can't go to the Garden. Uh, it has two one by one plates that have tiny Ferrari logo on it. Ooh, all right. Uh, his bow draw weight is 125 pounds, which is a lot, especially the rate of fire. And then Hawkeye is even more ridiculous at 250. Yeah. Uh, Hawkeye, the, the excuse they use for Hawkeye is that he was an Olympic um, archer, Olympic caliber archer, like a medalist. But he's still the best that would ever exist doing it. And... Uh, um, more uh, Green Arrow is you know similar in that way that like these would be the best archers that ever lived. And it's very funny they're like, yeah, he just you know fights crime. He's Robin Hood. Yeah, weird flex, but okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean they have. Here's the thing. They've got to make it pretty great because Arrow or Green Arrow in in the in the books is just Robin Hood. He's just Batman with, like, different kinds of arrows that do different things. So, like, they gotta do something. Yeah, he's really... So they're like, ah, uh, he's really good at it. Gives me the ability to waste time. Olympic archers draw weight. Like it. <laughs> yeah. Aeon Wizard. I love the boxing glove arrow. Yes. Uh, gas arrows, smoke bomb arrows are great. The punching, the uh, boxing glove uh, is a fantastic arrow. There are a lot of very silly arrows that I always enjoy. The, uh, you know, arrow with a rope because, you know, sometimes you just got to get places. It's just stuff. All right. So we got stuff for the, uh, we're building. We can build all this at once, which is cool. They gave Oliver a personality, and they made him a left-leaning liberal. Yes. Uh, well, it's an interesting thing when they when they make him basically like uh, a. They make him like a low level that doesn't want to go to the high level, and I think that's really interesting because Batman, for all his like fighting not nonsense, Batman. You know, still ca he captures bank robbers and muggers, and then also captures um, aliens that are trying to mind control uh, Gotham. Green Arrow uh, is basically just like, uh, "Hey, there's still a lot of crime going on, and I want to take care of that. I don't want to go to your tower in space and like deal with that stuff." I want to deal with this stuff. Uh, there are still, like, gangs that need to get vigilante Uh And I appreciate that as a character choice. That he's just like, uh, I got this stuff to do. You do your thing. And then he does get roped into those things as well. But, yeah, he's in some ways another version of Batman, but also, like, the anti-Batman in, in many ways. Which I which I like uh, as a character choice. It gives them more to do. All right, we're almost done here. We got to get our weapon here. Which did I not? Ooh. Uh, oh, it's over here. Okay, great. Yes. I was like, uh, these things shoot. You take this here, the little gun thing, pop this in. You'll find these on a lot of kits, especially Star Wars things as well. You pop that in. Uh, he's like, I got enough bow and arrow. Yeah, I'm doing my thing. You pop this on, and then when you press down, it'll shoot it, and then it'll bounce away. And then that'll be it. So this goes on here. This goes in there. So this thing does have a weapon. Brother Eye has a weapon. And then, yeah, there's Brother Eye doing its thing. 
And then I have a light. You can see it. It's a light. It's reflected through a lot of stuff. It's pretty cool. I've got one blaster for some reason. All right, so that's bag one. That's Brother I. Those fucking stud shooters. Yep. I think it's cool. Like, look, I'll admit, when I bought this kit a while ago, I bought it because I wanted to uh, have a, uh, a Batwoman fig. And I also, like, Brother I just looked weird. And I was like, I kind of want to build it. I didn't know it lit up, which I love. I love the light. But yeah, there's Brother Eye. We'll put Brother Eye aside as we start uh, putting together uh, the Bat Jet, which is the the other big part of this kit. Uh, has anyone chatted about the never newer Lego missiles almost as powerful as the spring loaded stuff from the 80s? Uh, yeah, I mean, some of these, th some of those shooters are pretty, like, pretty rough, I would say. Um, is that the Eye of the Illuminati? I mean, it is always watching you. It was a satellite designed to track metahumans in the event of some kind of outbreak and also to, or of violence and also to capture evil ones. Uh, and that was its original purpose. So, yeah, uh, the weapons in the 80s sometimes were like way more like nerf guns than they should have been. Um,. The mechanics they have now with the pull them back, hit a thing, shoot them out are certainly better than previous generations. But sometimes those weapons, like the stud things, like I just don't keep them loaded. But the missiles like can go pretty damn far. Yeah, some of the space stuff in the 80s was like really uh, was just like, hey, did anyone think about this? Like kids are building. Like, you you might put an eye out. Uh, yeah, so we're now into bag two, because I nulled bag one and two, um, and then we still have bag three, which will be most, you know, the rest of building this. Got some mostly black pieces, mostly wing stuff. It's a fun kit to put together. I love all of this. I love all this bronze, like, bat stuff. He's got Batman has his remote for the jet, and there's a controller and some bat wings and batarangs. Uh, my last two Star Wars kits, I don't load the missiles since they're hair trigger. Ah, uh, yes, definitely. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't load them. Usually, I do for photos, and then I'll take them out. But all my Lego stuff that has weapons, I just leave without them on there because those things just go. Alright, yeah, so we're working on this jet, which is fun. Um, yeah, I haven't talked DC in a while. It's nice to break things up. One of the other reasons why I wanted to do this kit was just to, like, break things up, because we've done some Marvel kits, and it's fun to talk about Marvel things, and I don't mind doing that, but, you know, it's fun to, to mix things up, talk about a few other things. Uh, let's see. Um, I've got stuff going on with me. Before we get to, you know, we got about 20 minutes before we take a, our pause for the cause where I talk about ways you can support the channel, as I do all, all the time. Um, uh, I've got a interview tomorrow with a uh, an agency that um, um, may send me out for temp work or part-time work, uh, contract work, or maybe in full-time, uh, temp to perm perhaps. Uh, so I'm going in to talk with them and see uh, what they can do. They're recruiters. So their goal is to place me at places and make a cut. Um, uh, in the meantime, that wouldn't be bad. Uh, I had an interview last week with a, uh, a full-time job that is seasonal. So it would be full-time hours, but only for three months, three-month gig. Uh, and I should hear about that soon. I don't know if I got that or whatever. Uh, dir hey, Dirty, happy to have you here. Uh... Uh, I miss talking DC since I was really big in the 90s and early 2000s cartoons. Myself, uh, Mr. Bob, you and me both. Uh, but yeah, happy to have you here. Uh, welcome, welcome. Um, uh, and then on Thursday, I have an interview for a part-time job uh, that I signed an NDA about. Now, 
the NDA is for the conversations we have and anything they tell me about the inner workings of that job. This NDA does not include the following information. I had to fill out a lot of paperwork before I got this meeting. I had to take uh, some tests online and watch some videos and do a lots of dumb stuff. And this job is a part-time gig that pays fifteen twenty-five an hour. And it is the most work I have ever put into any job that I've been trying to get. And the only reason I'm continuing with it is because I really want to get this job and quit this job. I very much need to work and cannot turn down the opportunity to work, but also know that I definitely at the first sign of another job will quit this thing because it pays fifteen twenty-five an hour and I am signing an NDA. Pat, did you or did you not apply to work for Space Command? Does no, not Space Command. Um I uh oops, I put this in the wrong spot. Gotta pop this up. This piece is in the wrong place, and I will pop it up now. Thank you. This thing rules. Uh is that what the secret job is? No. Um, I, uh, yeah, I applied for this gig that later found out that it was fifteen twenty-five an hour, part-time. 25 to 26 hours uh, a week. But uh, I might get third shift, uh, um, which I don't mind doing while I do other things. My biggest fear is that they're going to make me have to give up my other part-time job because they won't be flexible about scheduling. Um, but it's a job I can do. It's a job I'm overqualified for. Uh, and also, uh, the place I'm going to go interview at, I am interested in going into that place, which is why I'm fine with signing an NDA, which is only about the interview and the job. Uh, once I get the job, I can certainly talk about it, but I'm not going to talk about the interview stuff. Uh, and that was odd. That's an odd thing. Um, so, yeah. Um, but the... I'm not super enthused about um, the recruiters that I'm meeting tomorrow because the person I talked to in the initial phone call interview like wasn't quite sure they'd be able to find things that I'm looking for um, uh, as far as part-time or full-time. I think they can find me contract work and I'm fine with that. Uh, so hopefully I will be able to get some of that going. Um, I just need, you know, like I said, I'm not excited about the job that I have an interview for on Thursday, but whatever. The job that I uh, applied for that is seasonal, I am interested in because that job is, um, uh, is while it is seasonal, there is possibility of getting more work. Um, and also, uh, it pays very, very well. It would be full-time position. It'd be a lot of work. I'd be doing, I could do it from home and it pays very, very well. So I am uh, hoping I get that and don't have to do this part-time job uh, that I am signing an NDA for because I, I don't want it. Um, all right, we got some controllers here. So that's the pulling for you. Thank you, Recyclable. I appreciate that very much. Um, it is, uh, it's been rough. This year has uh, been uh, pretty fucking demoralizing. Um, and uh, I, I hope that it never comes off as, you know, me going through the motions when I say that having the stream, having cool people to chat with, um, working on model kits uh, and talking to people and, and having like plans to do this stuff has been incredibly uh, helpful uh, to my mental state uh, and to keeping me motivated. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Obviously, we're going to go till 11. This isn't a wrap-up or anything. That was just sincere thank you um, because uh, it, it has meant a lot. Uh, 
This kit just got weird again. It has two final styles uh, with different sets of stickers and hubcaps. Oh, so you have a choice of how you want it to be displayed. That's cool, Mr. Bob. And also weird. You're right. Uh, I hope you get it, Pat. Thank you, Ultron. Yeah, um, I hope I get this seasonal get. Here's, here's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that tomorrow I walk out of this meeting with this recruitment agency and they are, they find me temporary work or full-time work. But definitely, at the very least, I hope they immediately find me temporary work that I can immediately do. I will be very happy about that. And then, if that doesn't work out, and I can't, uh, uh, and, and I hope that this seasonal job comes through, because that would be great. If I if I worked a bunch of contract gigs, and because uh, the main thing that I'm running into a problem is, is I do freelance stuff, but freelance is a nightmare. It's awful. I don't wish it on anyone unless they are already very successful. Um, Because I have had some issues with people paying me on time or at all or ever. And it's bad. So I'm hoping that uh, the hope is that I can do some contract work while I'm waiting for this seasonal job, which would start October 15th to start uh because that's a month away uh and then maybe this recruitment will find me a full-time job that will be even better and it won't be a three-month job that i will be good at but instead it will be a full-time gig that i will be great at you know like that would be nice but if they can get me some work in the interim that would be great and also contract work should hopefully be something where I don't have to give up the uh, the time I spend at uh, the theater that I work at twice a week, which also I find out is going to be dark for two weeks at the end of September, beginning of October. So I really do need something because that's my only guaranteed source of income besides all the contract stuff that I've been doing. Uh, so to have uh, like anything steady would be... Pretty fucking great. All right, so let's put this on and make sure that we are lining this up right. We are. This is a cool looking. The Batjet is already looking really cool. Uh, but yeah, it is. Uh, it has been a odd few months. Um, I I said this on Twitter. I sold my ticket uh, in a, uh, a couple weeks ago. I sold my ticket to my brother. My brother and me were coming in October. Uh, and I put it up on StubHub because I was like, one, it was a Friday night. I really can't take time off. On Friday nights, I, I work. Uh, and it's one of the only like part-time gigs, but it's a gig and steady. So I don't, want, I don't feel right about taking that night off. And... I knew that I could get some money for it. So I was like, well, if I can get some money for it and wait, I got to figure this out here. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. This is going to go on here. This goes on this. And then this goes something. Oh. Okay, so I did this wrong. I gotta go back here. Sorry, sorry, buddy. Uh, um, but yeah, so I gave up my my brother, my brother and me ticket, and uh, I am uh, happy I did because they announced that they added a second show. So I sold it and made twelve dollars on that ticket, uh, and then like two days later they announced. So I feel bad for the person that bought my ticket to the early show and spent a lot of money because they could have got, they could have just tried to get to the later show, but also, Oh, I'm so happy that that worked out for me. And I, I made $12 at even after, uh, stuff hubs cut. So woo, lucked out. All right. We fixed this problem. I just didn't put the pieces at the right spot. Moving on. 
Uh, I started watching the anime Overlord and really enjoying it. I love the weird perspective it has. Uh, uh, stuck in an MMO isekai formula. Yes, recyclable. So, uh, as Overlord goes on, I don't love it. But, uh, I think the first season is really interesting and, and cool. Um, uh, there's an arc for the butler, the eyepatch butler character, Sebus, that rules. Because Sebus is the fucking best. Uh, the third season, uh, the, the first, second season starts with, like, a bunch of characters that you're like, well, it goes for it in a way that I appreciate, where, like, it's fucking dark as hell, and, uh, it goes out of your way to eventually be like, hey, you thought this guy was awesome? Well, let's introduce you to characters that you think are pretty cool and then he's going to fucking murder them. Like, you know, we meet all these cool lizard people and like, it's not a spoiler to tell you they're going to fucking kill those lizard people. Cause like they say at the beginning of it, uh, we're going to have to kill all the lizard men, but it's like shocking. Yeah. Christian, I, but it, yeah, it, it builds. And I think that like, you don't notice it as it's happening, how dark and twisted and evil it's becoming and how much, the main characters are the villains. And then season three, like, I I know friends that were just like, I'm done. They didn't finish season three. Because they were like, nah. Um, but like, Climb's real good. And like I said, Sebes rules. Sebes is like, fucking awesome. Just like a cool older butler dude just kicking ass and taking names and like doing good work a big fan Sebes is, is great his arc is is pretty awesome uh but yeah I mean they're a fun character the idea of uh NPCs suddenly being in control of their own thoughts and and being real people is very interesting. Uh, there's a little of that in Demon Lord Retry, which is a show that's on right now, um, that's on Hulu right now, that is attempting to do similar things uh, than Overlord. It's the closest show to Overlord that I've ever seen in that idea of, like, NPCs are now people. Other than, um, eventually, uh, Log Horizon, like, there's a whole thing about how the people that are trapped in the game don't realize that the NPCs are becoming through the influence of these heroes are growing and changing and becoming more than just computer generated programmed people it that part of log horizon school i don't think log horizon continues to be good i think it, it does like eventually become a bummer but uh at that point, it is solid. All right, so we're going to get into bag three. Um, this is all, these are all extra pieces. Uh, we still have the, the bat pieces as well, uh, the batarang stuff, these pieces here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pause for the cause, then we will null, and I will talk about anime, we'll null, and then we'll keep building and, and keep working because um, we do have a, a bag and a bag to build. So we'll just dump that out. And I will say, first and foremost, hey, uh, if you're currently a subscriber, let's throw the Bear Cave and the boat remotes in there, the Lego remote, uh, mechanics of the game world that seem too convenient. Yeah, I'll agree. Their their money went into character design and not so much action scenes. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. If you're currently a subscriber, thank you so much for that. Hey, if you're a, um, a Prime subscriber, you could... Uh, Aristofan, how's it going? Uh, you could, for half off, become a paid one and then use your coin for somebody else because it's September. Uh, also, bits and coins, which are always appreciated. If you use the uh, cheer emote, the sub cheer emote, which will show up, the September or Subway cheer emote, uh, I get bonus points, um, which is cool. That's on Subway. Um, that's another way uh, to do that. But yeah, uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch. You get a free token. You can use that on anybody. Uh, if you gift someone a sub, 
Uh, that cost actual full money, but they can convert that, and the conversion will go into after the gift month is up for them, and when it first starts in, their first month will be half off. So if you were gifted, you could convert that if you wanted to, or you could just hang out. Um, uh, as always, uh, thanks so much for everybody that's watching. Um, I'm going to quickly go through all the ways you can support the stream. Uh, as I said, uh, Twitch and, and Bits and Coins, they're always appreciated. Um, uh, I have a pay, uh, Patreon. You can join the Patreon if you want to. You don't have to, but you could. I, uh, I get a bigger cut, but I also like the numbers going up on Twitch. We are at 40 subscribers right now um, with uh, ooh, 43 points. Uh, I'm going to look that up, uh, my analytics here. Uh, cause that means, yeah, there's another, I got another tier two sub. I don't know who that is. Uh, somebody became a tier two subscriber. I'm going to look that up. Ba -ba -ba. Let's see. Sorry. I'm looking at, uh, Iron Souls classic, uh, weak mints. Uh, it's my other tier two. Uh, Harold just cheered 20. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I don't know who else is our, uh, all that, whatever. I'll figure that out later, but that's cool. I just noticed I, I noticed I had more points than normal. Uh, Harold, have a great night. Thanks so much for hanging out, buddy. Um, but yeah, I have a Patreon. There's different tiers. Uh, they get video links early, uh, for things that I do. Um, it is another, it's another option for people. I have an Amazon wish list. I've been told that a few things are coming on my Amazon wish list, uh, which is awesome. Thank you for everybody that has bought things on there. I'm going to quickly go through a few new things. I added uh, Law from One Piece's Submarine, which is a small little kit. Nice, easy build. I put that in there. It's a cheap thing, another inexpensive thing. I always try to put a few cheap options in there. Uh, there's more stuff coming that's on pre-orders and other sites that's going to start showing up on Amazon. And when those show up, I will put them on Amazon as well. Uh, if you buy something from there, it goes and, uh, uh, it, uh, it ships to me and there's no fuss, there's no muss. And then they jump the line. So I will, it will jump the queue of whatever I have left to build and I'll build your thing, uh, next. So that's, I think pretty good. Uh, cause I know that I have, uh, a couple chibi kits coming, uh, it looks like, and, uh, a boat, I got a boat coming, so that's fun. Um, your package should arrive tomorrow, says Recyclable, yeah, uh, and I'll, of course I'll shoot a video and that'll go up my Patreon first, um, but yeah, those always jump the line, so, uh, when I finish a kit that I'm working on, uh, what I usually do is my $10 Patreon vote. So if I have a few things from my wish list come in, then I will, uh, I'll buy, I'll, I'll put a poll up and they'll decide what I build next. Um, okay. Uh, if you don't want to use Amazon and I get it, uh, reminder, this is the pause for the cause. This is our momentary break in the stream. We still have another hour of building. We're going to null and then build. Um, but I did want to take a moment to just, uh, you know, Talk about different ways you can support the stream if that's what you'd like to do, including go to USA Gundam Store. So if you don't want to use Amazon, if you're like, I, I don't want to support Amazon, but I do want to support you, well, you could buy a gift card, and then you could email the code, and then you could send me that code. You could send me a uh, DM, because my DMs are open, or you could send me a whisper here on Twitch, um, and send me the code, and then I can uh, use that as a gift card. That's another option. Uh, and then there's coffee and Streamlabs and PayPal. Uh, coffee and Streamlabs go into m building things, buying model kits. That goes into a fund that I use exclusively for buying model kits. My PayPal, me, is if you want to give me money that is not used for this. I'm including it today, uh, but the PayPal link is literally just for if you're like, uh, hey, here you go. It's just a tip. It is a it is a donation for me living in my life uh, and not build related. But coffee and stream labs, I know that's for build with bear. Uh, build with bear community. Speaking of which, I got a Discord. Join that Discord. It's good. Uh, and that's it. That's all the uh, links to things. Of course, this is all in the show description on Twitter. 
Oh, not sorry, Twitter. On, not Twitter. YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, if you're watching the VOD, it's all on my YouTube, um, uh, as well as currently in the chat. Uh... All right, I'm going to drink some water. This is your excuse, folks. Your recommendation, your time to drink a little water. As I said, today we hit 40 subscribers. I'm very happy about that. Thank you, everybody, who is currently a subscriber. Remember to, if you use Twitch Prime, you have to manually renew it, so make sure you renew. And when you do renew it, try to do it on stream so you can hit that button, and then we know, and then we can all... Uh, shower you with emotes. Hydrates. Yes, Christian and Dirty are both like, hey, hydrate. It's it's good. Um, We are in the end of the summer months, beginning of the fall months, which is very nice for me because it means that uh, having these lights on is cool and, and relaxing. Uh, Cow Snipers just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Let's throw the bear cave emote in there. Not one. Multiple cow sniper, cow snipers. Thank you very much uh, for subscribing, Solf. Hello, Solf. Um, but yeah, uh, cow snipers. Thank you so much for subscribing with Twitch Prime. Uh, linking your Amazon, your Twitch. That's rad. I did get some water on this kit or bat uh, kit. Um, I did get some water on this, uh, but it's the OMAC instructions, so I'm not worried about it. Let's build. Let's quickly build OMAC, and then we'll get into Noling. Uh, if you're, if you've never watched uh, one of these streams and don't know what Noling is, uh, it in many ways was originally kind of developed as a way to do photography, uh, and kind of like a way to showcase all the stuff in in a photograph and, and kind of like whatever. Uh, for building, it is very helpful. Um, for uh, we're gonna separate by color. And then in the building process, I can be like, oh, I need a gray, uh, light gray, two by two bendy thing. Okay, let me look in the grays. Instead of, let me move all my pieces. Now, obviously, there are not a lot of pieces here right now, but it's still easier to find that. So we're just going to quickly do that. Here's Omac. Omac has a mohawk, and the eye uh, is, is a uh, the uh, the design of Omac and some of the design in, in Brother Eye are a throwback to the original characters created by Jack Kirby, which is pretty rad. It is an homage and a reference. Also, uh, I don't want to do it, but you can uh, if you if you these things if you bend them back, this will pop out and it will fire. And I don't want to do that because then I have to find them. But it will do that, and that's pretty. That's weird. That's a weird thing. It's a choice. All right, so let's null. Clear. Clear. Light gray. Black. I always try to separate dark gray and light gray, so it's very easy for me to tell them apart. Um, especially in kits like Star Wars kits, where you're dealing with a lot of light gray and dark gray. It is, uh, it is occasionally not that easy to tell them apart on the uh the paper um for me anyway uh it's a lot easier under these lights uh sometimes i'll know um uh just like uh if it's a really big kit if it's like 800 pieces i will know off stream and sometimes i realize when i've known and i didn't have my proper setup that like i'll oh there's a bunch of dark blue mixed in here. I didn't realize there was navy blue, but I couldn't tell it under like regular lighting conditions. Uh, but then later I'm like, oh, no, 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 that's, that's the wrong color. All right, put that there. Uh, and I am mixing silver in with a dark gray because there are a few silver pieces, but those are very, those are just very easy to tell apart on the kit and they don't have, they generally don't overlap. So, I'll just put that there. But like, this and this are technically two different colors. One is silver and one is dark gray. Technically. But whatever. Separate. Um, as I, I think I, I said this on Twitter. When this kit is done, I'm not going to immediately jump into my next Lego set. Um, partially because I know that I'm going to have something coming in the mail that I'd like to build before that. Because we've done a bunch of Lego 
in a row. So my hope is that I can finish off the stream by doing some stickers on an old kit. And I won't reveal that until we get there. But I have an old kit that I've built before that um, when I did my sticker fundraiser thing, we're like, hey, if you donate, I'll put some stickers on a little kit. Uh, we didn't get to this one. So it was one of the ones we didn't get to. And I'm excited to get to it. Uh, speaking of dark light gray gray, did you see the new Star Wars Destroyer Lego? It is Aristophane. You're totally right. That is a very big kit. I did see that. Yeah, that's a that's a monster. Sometimes I'm always like, I like that. You know, I love that. But I'm always just like, well, who's that for? Who's? Here's the thing. Not only the cost, who, who, who's got the room? Who's got the space for giant Lego sets? I know I don't. Obviously, the three-in-ones are great because you just put them all together and you know, you end up with a smaller thing. I will say this. The next Lego set I have is the 301 that I will do if if we, you know, I need to go to that. I kind of want to do uh, one of the kits that's coming in the mail before I do that. Uh, this kit is weird because it's the Sunset Track Racer, and it's a three-in-one, but it's a boat and two different kinds of cars. Like, it's different race cars. Like, I'm not sure what the difference is. Like, one obviously has a roof and is a different design, and one's got wheels that are out front. Uh, and then a boat. And I just really like that. But I'm like, these seem a little too close. The thing I like about three-in-ones is they're very disparate. And those are a little too similar for my liking. That's just my opinion. Uh, it's like seven inches shorter than the Superstar Destroyer, but bigger mass-wise. So it's going to be huge. Yeah. That is, that's, that's a big friend. Um, all right. Yeah. So Noling wasn't too, too long here. And we'll get in the building. But yeah, I, um. We've done so much Lego in a row, and also because we like, one is a car, but seems angry about it. Uh, we did so much Lego in a row because that surfer van, we like took breaks and did other things. And then I did two Lego sets when I was in Seattle, came back to the surfer van, and then we immediately went into this. Like, I'd like to do something a little different. So, uh, but since the kit isn't here yet that I would do, uh, wait. Oh, I put these in the, yeah, I put this in the wrong place. I just realized that, I don't know why, but I, I put these things just very much not where they belong. Okay, so I'm going to pop this off here. Yes, these were meant to go here. And then also, I missed the clear pieces that were supposed to go on. I did miss a step. So not only did I miss the thing, I missed a step. What happens sometimes when you're like, oh, I got this, and you th start thinking about other things, and suddenly you realize you don't got this. Um, but yeah, um, so I figured I would do some sticker work while we, while uh, to, to finish off today's episode after this is done because I'm expecting this to be done um, in the next 50 minutes I think we'll finish off this kit there's not a whole lot to do and that way we can do some stickers that's like a bonus but yeah I um, I totally miss a step here because they give you extra pieces which is great but that's why I don't put them like away or anything I always have them out there we go all right, I just put in the steps that I missed. And we'll move on. Uh, oh, so Dirty put the that kit there. Yeah. It's a $700 kit, uh, which is nonsense. And then it's just complete and total nonsense. And then I got a thing that, yeah. That's 4,784 pieces and $700. And it's available exclusively to LEGO VIPs the 18th of September. Uh, coming soon on October 1st for other people that want to buy a $700 kit. I don't know. I guess if you got money for that, it's still cheaper than the Millennium Falcon and the Super Star Trek. Indeed. I love my Millennium Falcon. And that was $100 something. dollars, But I didn't buy that, so... Um, uh, okay, so, 
it's time to talk anime. While we continue building this kit, let's talk some anime. Uh, three shows to talk about. First off, uh, I'm going to let go of VIP. I'm not going to do that. All right, Mr. Bob, uh, I'm glad you're not doing that. That's a lot of money. I mean, you spend your money how you want to spend your money, but that is a lot of money, my friend. So I'm glad you're not doing that. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So fruit baskets. Fruit baskets. I'm caught up. Uh, fruits basket. Not fruit baskets. Fruits basket. I'm caught up on it. It's still very good. I don't have a lot to say about it. It's just a good show uh, with good characters, and the animation is really nice. I've been watching some... We're going to talk about some garbage an tier uh, animation um, in some of the other shows that I've been watching. But that one is... Really nice animation. I mean, they don't have to do a lot of fight scenes. There's there's some, you know, physicality in it, but yeah. Um, oh, oh, man, Pat, I saw that spirit of darkness from Kanabusa appear in our fort in today's episode. Yeah, I'm going to get to that, Dirty. Oh, I'm going to get to that. But let me, Fruits Basket, let me just finish talking about that. I'll get to that. No, because it's, it's in, we're gonna, today we're going to talk about a show I really like and don't have a lot to say about. Uh, a show I like and I don't know why they made some of the choices they made. And a show that every episode that I watch, I like the show less and less. And we'll go in that order. And we'll get there. Uh, Lesbrook says, it's nonsense, but I realized the other day that this and the Moon and Falcon are probably released to try to uh, curtail the aftermarket prices of the original, which are like four or five figures. Yeah, so maybe they're putting out new expensive ones so the other ones go, yeah, that might be why. Uh, they're like, oh, if you want to pay a lot of money, you pay us a lot of money. Not other people a lot of money. That could be it. Uh, so, so fruit ba fruits basket still really good. There's plenty of best girls in that show. Cool character stuff. It's a drama. I enjoy it. It's silly when it needs to be silly. I think the voice acting is really strong. I don't know what to say about it. It's good. I'm glad I caught up on it. Um, now let's talk about One Piece. We were. It is not serendipity. It is a coincidence that we are building Batman stuff when the character Batman was all up in this episode. So here's the thing about this character. He's a joke in the manga. There is a character in... One Piece named Batman. But he is a joke. He is a throwaway one page, maybe two pages in the manga joke. He is a gag that they don't take seriously. But in the anime, part of their, well, we need to extend stories. We need to do filler. We, we have to do a, an episode a week. We're not going to, uh, we're not going to, we're going to extend this. We're going to do pages. We're going to create new stuff. Sometimes that stuff is interesting and it's lore and it's cool and it's expanding the the, the storylines. In this case, they gave a joke character, a throwaway gag character, a nonsense thing that none of them care about, now commands armament hockey. A thing that only so many people are supposed to know how to do and use. And they made this character like people were worried about this guy and like he like deflected a punch like from Luffy and it's just I try not to come down on filler no it's not cool also Christian it's still not cool he's still a joke character they just made a joke character more of a badass but it's not a badass he's just annoying because it's like this guy like I understand if you don't read the manga but if you don't read the manga, you're still like, what, what the, who the fuck is this guy? What the fuck is this shit? Uh, it's really frustrating. It is a... Um, it is a, a bummer. Uh, the art, art still looks great. Fight scenes are still great. Sound design. I mean, it's to me, it's my favorite sound design since uh, 
uh, alabaster um, years and years and years ago, years ago, which I thought had cool music to the background. The music's still good. The art direction is still good. Um, it's just that I, I try not to be a like, well, you know, they're just trying to extend it as much as they can. They don't want to get caught up with the manga. They want to keep going, blah, blah, blah. But like, it's just weird. There is, so the thing with it is like the movie is apparently really good. The new movie is apparently really, really good. And this arc, the Wano arc is a return to form. Uh, Whole Cake Island, which took forever to do, ended really dramatically and very cool. Uh, and it did the things that you could only do in anime. The song that Big Mama sings at the end, her fantasy, is so much more realized in the in the manga or the anime than it is in the manga. And it's fucking rad as hell. Uh, I missed a piece, so now I'm going back. Okay. I just... The engines. I didn't put the engines on. Um, but overall... Uh, and then the... Reverie arc is very short and it's fine, but the Wano arc like has been very strong. It's just that right now there's like parts of it that I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to be like that. I want to be psyched about One Piece because I really like One Piece. Now, the third show that I watched since Saturday, because you know I don't have a lot of time to watch. You know, there's only so much stuff that comes out. Everything fucking comes out on Friday or Tuesday, Wednesday. And one show on Thursday. Uh, you know, I'll have two shows to watch tomorrow. Um, Ari Fuerta, as mentioned by Dirty. Ari Fuerta introduces a new character. She's a dragonborn. Uh, um, she's fine. As Her design looks cool. The fact that there, she's like a... That, uh, dragons were considered to be uh, as a Ferrari Ante knockoff sticker on the box. Okay. That Yeah, that sounds like you're working on a weird kit, Mr. Bob. Uh, send me photos when you're done. Um, or put them on the, the, the uh, Discord. Um, so, Ari Forita, as you know, if you've been watching the streams, it's an isekai that I was pleasantly surprised about. I thought it started off really strong and was really unique and interesting. Um, I liked that he had to get better at it and like everything in the first dungeon I thought was really well done and really cool and occasionally they would skip out to the other students that came over to this world and I didn't care about it as much. Um, uh, but uh when they introduced the bunny girl, I was like, oh no, this is now just a fucking harem isekai. And now they've introduced a dragon. So this dragon was mind controlled. We did They didn't know that she was a dragonborn uh, and was a person that can be in a human form and then also a dragon. They just thought they were facing a big dragon because the dragonborn were supposedly extinct. Well, this dragonborn was mind controlled by some sort of villain character of course right it's a villain we don't know who yet we do but we don't know who yet but someone controlled this uh and um so they're fighting this dragon and they're fighting this dragon and then they weaken it enough that the only weak spot on a dragon is a place without armor. So our hero shoves a giant rod into this dragon's butthole. And then the dragon says, hey, stop doing that. And you see the uh, dragon's eyes change from red to to white or regular eyes because it was weakened a lot from fighting and then it was in enough state that this jogged it out of the spell that it had been under 
And this dragon, with a female voice, goes, Hey, I'm a dragonborn. I'll tell you whatever you need to know. Please take this big rod out of me. Uh, and then says, on multiple occasions, If you don't, my man is running low. I'm going to turn into my humanoid form, and I will die. And meanwhile, there are a bunch of low-level characters around who are very embarrassed. And so this, eventually it happens, and we see this is a pretty-looking lady, uh, and she's got a fan. I don't know how her human form, she just has a Chinese fan, like a, a hand fan. She does, and she's trying to be very coy. But, as Dirty mentioned, much like the character Darkness from Konosuba, turns out this dragonborn didn't know that she likes to be treated poorly. Because uh, she's never been treated so roughly before. He was not gentle in removing that big old pole. Uh, and then he also is threatens to kill her and is mean to her. And then it ends with him dragging her along because she's like, I don't have enough mana to walk. I want to help. But uh, please. Uh, the fact that she's into it. I need to make this very clear. I need to make this very, very clear. I am not kink shaming. I am not yucking yum. I am merely stating that this show did not need a dragonborn that wants our hero to be mean to her and to denigrate her. This show already has a bunny girl that would be very happy to lose her virginity to our hero. And a vampire who was betrayed hundreds of years ago, is a mortal vampire betrayed hundreds of years ago, that gave up whatever her previous name was and asked her savior, because she has hero worship issues, to name her. Uh, and then insinuates that when he was unconscious that she took advantage of him in some way. Uh, and what is basically some form of Stockholm Syndrome slash hero worship is treated as love. There, here, as I said, if you ever want to watch Ari Fuerta, stop when they leave, when they leave the labyrinth and meet the bunny girl. Just stop watching. It's episode five or six. When they leave the labyrinth, this show is now bad. I know there's going to be, there's going to fight a bunch of demons. I'm going to keep watching. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I don't need this dragon to be this way. What if this dragon was just fucking cool? And like, because the motivation of thank you for breaking the spell I murdered innocents, which which she did. I want to atone for that. Please let me help you fight these uh, monsters and protect this town to make up for what happened. And then afterwards be like, hey, I want to travel with you and help you. Because that's a, one of the last... Va that's, as far as we know, the last vampire. And the buddy race is really rare. And you seem cool. And whatever. I, but they're like, you know what this character needs is to just be awful. Uh, I forgot to mention the only good parts of this episode because, weirdly enough, there were things I liked about this episode. One, uh, Dirty may, may have noticed as well, uh, the fight scene is comically poorly animated. This whole show, all their fights, this, the use of CG is piss poor. There is one attack. Uh, uh, Mike AM is now hosting. Thank you, Mike AM. Thank you very much for hosting the stream. Appreciate that very much. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, the better anime dragon is Villadora Tempest. A hundred percent. Villadora. Oh, God. Vill Villadora rules from uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. That's a cool dragon. Uh... I don't necessarily mind this dragon. Uh, so I, I did want to say that one of the things that I like about this episode of Ari Fuerta that I thought was good 
is how um, this teacher. So uh, it, the, the premise is a bunch of students get summoned to this world to help a god or help a, a city or whatever in this war. And the teacher gets brought over too, and she does not want anyone to do this. Uh, to, to like fight. And she gets kind of like overruled. And so she's been like trying to keep everybody safe. She's so relieved to find our main character who was presumed dead is not dead. That even though he changed, she's so happy that she like kind of relaxes. And also the fact that he's like now very strong because he's like a, he was like a, a bookworm or whatever. Uh, he does kind of feel obligated to help her out. Um, even though he said that he doesn't care about his classmates, he just wants to get home. Uh, he just wants to beat the, beat all of the labyrinths, get all of the magics, do the thing. Uh, Dirty, Dirty says, yeah, the CG was pretty poor on the dragon fight. Yeah, there's a thing where, like, where uh, that big energy falls on the dragon, and they just, like, move the, they like, just, like, shove the dragon down. I was like, this is very bad. Um, I hadn't noticed all of how bad the, the, the fight animation stuff is, but... Uh, the boulders from a couple episodes ago were hilariously terrible. It's such a such a disappointment in the show. Whereas Demon Lord Retry is kind of meh, and uh, I'm interested in finding out what happened, what's going to happen in this episode of. Uh, um, uh, sorry. Uh, this next episode of uh tomorrow, uh, uh, this guy cheat magician. It's a guy cheat magician was slow and kind of boring, but has turned out to be the best isekai of the four that came out this season somehow, which is like kind of surprising. I mean, it doesn't say a lot. Obviously, like slime was so good that it it's hard to have an isekai that that matches it, and even like. Wise Man's Grandchild was interesting. It wasn't great, but it was, there was stuff about it I liked. Animation is hard, okay? Christian, you're right. Uh, it's just a... And they, like, took a week... Here's the thing. Also, that show took a week off. Uh, they, like... There was an ep... There was a week where there wasn't an episode. And it... Ugh. It, yeah, it's... Oh, I did this wrong? How did I do this wrong? It's a, it's a rough show. And like I said, it's a bummer because I really did like it. Slime was good all the way through. Yeah, so uh, I will say, uh, if you haven't watched the OVA that got added, they add, they did an OVA and they put that up on, uh, on Crunchyroll. Don't watch it. It's not good. The OVA is bad. Uh, it is clearly to entice people to, to buy the Blu-ray in Japan. Uh, it, is, uh, it is not uh, in keeping with the quality of the rest of uh of it and it is the most um the OVA is the most uh harem of the whole show cuz like they play around with the different orc uh liking him like that competition but this one's like bathing suits and like lots of like eyes popping out and like yeah, the OVA is is not good. Um, it's a uh, it is it is a bummer because comparatively, there's a lot to like about that show, and that show also goes out of its way to not be uh, garbage. So this this just came with a bunch of bat shit that we don't use. None of these pieces are used in this kit. And I don't know why we get them. But we've got all this, like, Batman stuff. This bronze Batman stuff. And I don't know why. But that's the kit. Oh, this piece probably goes somewhere. I did miss this piece. I don't know where this piece goes. I don't think I missed anything. Maybe it goes in the bottom. Does it go in the bottom and I missed that? I'm going to go way back here. Take a look. I don't think so. Oh, 
Oh, that goes back there. Okay, I did miss something, yeah. It goes in the back of this. Um, but yeah, uh, Ari Forte is disappointment. It's a guy cheat magician, as I said. It's not great, but like a minor character passes away. It's always interesting. Um, and like kind of forgotten at this point, but hopefully she'll be brought back up as we get closer to revealing the truth about what's going on. All right, yeah, so I did miss a piece here, which didn't feel like an extra. It definitely felt like, hey, you missed this. So now we'll put that on. But yeah, um, yeah, this kit's almost done. I'm just gonna uh, pop on the last couple pieces here. We'll take a, we'll, you know, take a photo later. Um, but yeah, this is a fun little kit. Put this on here. Uh, I just can't wait for My Hero Academia. Heck yeah, Christian. Uh, that is coming. There's a bunch of stuff that I'm excited about. Uh, the return of Food Wars, and uh, because we're, the, we're in fights, and that's when I like Food Wars, is when there's there are competitions. This doesn't fucking close, though. The booklet has... Okay, I guess you have to put her here, and then have her lean back. Okay, that's what you have to do. Got it. Okay. She really, she really has to lean back on this thing for this to work. All right, great. And then you can put these uh, things in the front and shoot them out, but we won't do that. Um, part uh, part with the food wars is the best part of the foods. Uh, yes, when they're actually battling, like I said, the first part of season three, I didn't enjoy. I did not enjoy the thing that eventually led up to the um, like street fair competition stuff and then i was fine towards the end of it it did involve the creepy um girl uh that uh loves the, the creepy girl that loves like food that isn't great meeting with uh our main character which is like an interaction since he makes stinky food sometimes like that was fun because that was a thing that like i really wanted to see and it was nice to have that like in the anime proper because like those two characters interacting was very fun. But for the most part, I did not enjoy a lot of the first uh, part of part three. Uh, all right. So we'll take a photo of this later. But here's Brother Eye. And here is uh, here is the Bat Jet and Batman and Omac. Uh, she has the Sigamori ending. Yes. Uh some good characters here um, doing their thing. I'll take a photo of this later. But right now, we're going to push this aside. Uh, and as I said, uh, instead of jumping to another Lego set, because I know that people uh, sent me things in the mail, and I'd rather build some, some model kits that are coming in the mail on Thursday rather than do another Lego set, because I've done four Lego sets in a row, uh, we're going to put some stickers on a horse. Uh, we got a horse here. This is a high-grade kit. This is the Master Gundam and uh, Funasaki, uh, which is a Gundam. It's a uh, unicorn Gundam for that a horse pilots. And that's a thing that exists. And, of course, we got a very red version uh, and blue version of the Master Gundam. Um, and it's a, it's a fun, high-grade but uh, I did the stickers uh, on the hooves, and then I just stopped doing the stickers on this kit. So we're going to go back and do more stickers on this kit. Because it deserves to be chill and cool and have all its stickers. Uh, we didn't get to this when we were doing the, the when I was doing the sticker thing um, previous week. So now we get to do that. I'm excited about it. Got a bail for the evening. Thanks for the stream. Recyclable, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Uh, have a great rest of your Monday. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, we're just going to... Um, we, there's the hooves. We're just going to find the different parts here. And most of these stickers are for uh, this kit. this The horse part. So, we're going to... We're going to put some stickers on a horse. Which is not the weirdest thing I've said on stream. 
but it's definitely one of the weirder things I've said on stream. Yeah, I did like this gray sticker here and this gray sticker here, and we got to put the eyes on it and, you know, just kind of spruce it up a bit. Let it have a little bit of a life. Uh, and that way when it goes out to somebody in the future, it'll look real cool. And they'll be like, oh, cool, you put stickers on my horse. Uh, all right, so that's... H symbol. Uh, sometimes sticker kits are labeled, and that is great. And sometimes they are not la they are labeled with numbers, and sometimes they are labeled with information. And that is not as helpful to me as when they have kanji that I cannot read, and I have to match them up. All right, so that's... Uh, sorry about that. Okay. Huh. Look at the box here. Oh, I can just look at the kit. All right, so that's green. There they are. They're very tiny. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I can also look at we can also look at the um, how it looks in the uh, uh, instruction book, which is helpful because the instructions are obviously in black and white, and that's not particularly helpful for stickers. But it can be helpful when you're. Uh, when you can reference the actual color photo. Uh, so we have some stream left. If there's anything you all want to chat about, anything you want to discuss in the last you know, time here, we're obviously going to work on this uh, here. So I'm just going to be putting some stickers on the kit here. Yeah, if there's anything you want to discuss, let me know. Uh, always willing to chat about what's going on. Uh, I caught a little bit of the um, uh, very excellent um, uh, Giant Bomb Extra Life Rock Band uh, Beatles stream yesterday. I could only watch the first hour before I had to go do something, but I uh, really enjoyed that hour, and I'm going to slowly, over the course of this week, catch up on all of it like while I'm doing stuff. I think that's going to be my goal. So that'll be fun. Uh, but I hate that Mr. Pope, Eric Pope, was in my city. Eric Pope was in New York. I knew he was in New York, but he was in for that, and that was it. And then went back to Montreal because he has two kids and a wife and a job. And uh, I hate that uh, Eric was in my city and I didn't get to see him, especially like the week after PAX. Uh, I can't wait for whatever unannounced game uh, that Eric is currently uh, helping with. Uh is ready for Ubisoft to uh, send him to conventions to talk about and do panels about so that I can see my friend. I can convince them to send him to PAX East for a panel or about it or in a meetup or something, you know. Uh, um... Today I watched, uh, Ultron says, today I just watched the PAX GB musical you were on. Yes! Uh, I really enjoyed um, doing uh, Quest Mania, finally. I don't know. I, I legitimately don't know what game Eric's worked working on. I, I, I haven't asked him because uh, I don't need that. I don't need to know. 
uh, and that way he doesn't have to break anything to tell me a guy not in the games industry what he's working on a trustworthy gentleman f for sure but someone who is not a colleague in that respect these stickers are very old and sometimes do not want to do what you want them to do which is stick exactly where you want and stay there um Ultra and I had so much fun on that on that uh, on that uh, panel. I was so happy that Abby invited me to be on it and to get to work with Jan. Very happy about that. It was a pleasure to do it. All right, so let's figure out more of these stickers here. So those are the two. Those are those two. That's that. Those are the eyes. Um, I have more stickers to put on the face. Yes. Uh, don't know which stickers those are. All right. Um, moving on. Um, Abby just got her Tony in the mail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a fun, uh, a very fun stream to do. I was, uh, I was uh, in a panel, I should say as well. I was very happy when, uh, they asked me to do some shenanigans on there. Uh, all right. So is that paint and not a sticker? I got all this gold. Was that the only stickers that were on this? All, is all this other stuff him? I thought for sure that this wasn't paint, that this was a sticker, but... And that these were stickers. Yeah, that looks like stickers, too. All right, let me look at this here. The hooves is a sticker. Yes. But is that part... Isn't that part a sticker? All right. I guess not. I guess a lot of this kit was paint. The hose were that. Yeah, that, I put those all on there. And that goes on there. And that's that sticker. And then... Yeah, I thought for sure that there were more stickers on this horse. But apparently, um, all the rest of this is yellow paint. Very surprised to see that. Alright. Uh somebody sent in a Tony. Oh, someone sent in a, a simple serving frosted flake package. Okay. Alright, last I'm gonna have to go check out the Instagram because that seems pretty cool. Alright, yeah, so that's that piece, that's that piece. A lot of this is stickers for the master, it looks like. Stickers that go on the these pieces here. I guess we'll do that. Some of these stickers, I guess. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed. I thought for sure that there was more stickers. All the, all they hadn't put on here was the eyes. Apparently, I thought that this was all the gold stickers here. Those are all go on there. So that was a little bit of a bust. I apologize. I thought I thought that more than just the hooves and the eyes were stickers. I thought for sure some of this yellow was this, was the horn and this piece here. Uh, but as far as I can tell, it was not that. And all that yellow, yeah, that, that yellow is paint. Weird. Huh. I'm gonna double check one more time. Make sure that I'm not missing something. But I don't think I am. Yeah, those are stickers there. That's the symbol for sticker. Symbol for sticker. And then just, yeah, there's the hooves. Huh, okay. Well, that wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. So I apologize for that. Um, 
but yeah, that's going to do it for, for the stream tonight. Um, I, uh, as I said, I do have a Lego set, but I didn't want to start it because I know that before Thursday, I will have something coming uh, from the wish list, and that will be built on Thursday. Uh, so whatever, I know that a few people sent some things out. Whichever comes in first will be the thing that I build uh, on stream. So keep an eye on that. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I'm just going to end a little early tonight. Um, hope you don't mind, but whatever. It's 10 of. This happen. These things happen. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I'm excited about building a model kit uh, uh, on Thursday. Uh, I do have a bonus stream on Wednesday. Wednesday at 9 o'clock. I'm just going to play Hearthstone on Wednesday. Uh, I got a deck. It's a quest uh, hunter deck. People aren't playing it. Uh, but I have done very well with it and really enjoy it. It's Quest Hunter. It's a fun deck. Um, I'm going to be playing a lot of that and probably also my Rogue uh, Quest deck because I like that. Uh, that's on Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I will be streaming and playing uh, Hearthstone Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. I'll be back and working on a brand new kit. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Have a great rest of your Monday if it's Tuesday or Saturday or whatever. And I'll see you on the next Build with Bear workshop. Bye-bye.